Let's tie a Stillwater Nymph or Denny Rickards, my expression of Denny Rickards, Stillwater Nymph. I have a wiggle shank here by Flyman Fish Company, and I have 10 odd good broad thread and olive. Take the thread, tie it back, oh, say 5 eighths to half an inch, back from the eye of the hook. I like this shank because it's got that huge eye, cost a third of a, a hook instead of cutting a hook in order to get this shank. I'm going to take a piece of uh, olive marabou and tie it in as my tail. Tail's probably about the length of the abdomen. It just depends on what looks good to you. You'll excuse my hands, they're all beat up. Uh, this happens to be my time of the year to be fishing and I tie flies so I can fish. So they get pretty ugly this time of year. It just shows I'm fishing though. <laughs> I tie the material up all behind the eye. Let me clip off the excess. I like to leave a little bit of room behind the eye just so it gets a little clearance so it can wiggle. And lash it down. I'm going to take another piece of marabou, tie it in at its tips, its tips facing forward, and then I'm going to pull it over the top, and it'll be actually the back strap for the nymph. I wet it a little bit just so it keeps the fibers together, makes it easier to tie it in. Gonna take a piece of orange grizzly hackle. This is like, oh, size 12 or 14. And it's going to be my kind of like my legs or gills for my fly. I'm going to create a dubbing loop. I'm just going to split that thread. That 10 knot thread splits really easy compared to the 17 knot thread. Sometimes I still miss. I'm going to take some hairs here in olive and create a dubbing brush. You can see I grab quite a bit of it. It's not like I'm dubbing for a dry fly. I really do put a lot of, uh, or another kind of atom, I put a lot of dubbing on this fly. I just like the look of it. It's really buggy and spiky and got all those tendrils moving around in the water when you strip it through or when it drops. And just take that dumb loop and spin my thread, capturing those fibers in that split loop. And I'm just going to wrap it up to the front in concentric circles, about just behind the eye. See how buggy that baby looks? Oh. Now I'll take my hackle and just wrap it through. I like about four, maybe five, five wraps up to the front. and capture it with my thread and tie it off. I take my scissors and trim off the top. <clears throat> And 
and then pull off that, pull over that little bit of marabou, extra marabou that I put in there as my back strap and tie it off behind the eye. I just like that look. And just take my thread and tie off right there behind the eye. This is the whip finish. <clears throat> I go three and then three again. A good friend of mine, Greg Cunningham, taught me that if you whip finish six, six times, you don't need to put head cement. Just cleaning out some of the extra, extra material. I'm going to take a pair of wire cutters and trim that excess wiggle shank off. Just pull the material back, get a pair of side cutters, and good to go. That's the other nice thing. It trims really easily. Now taking a size 14, 2457 hook. And I've got a two millimeter bead on there. I had been using 18s and 16s, but I've been chasing smallies with these flies, and that I just need that heavier hook and bigger hook. A little more gape to get that jaw on that smallie or that large mouth. I'm once again using 10 aught good broad olive thread. I've taken a piece of 17 pound mono, and this is gonna help me to have a brace for my loop. I've crimped it so it has a flat spot, so I'm matching a flat spot up to a round spot on my hook, and it'll set in better. And I'm gonna figure eight that piece of mono right on the top of the hook. And it's what I'm gonna use to brace my loop for my tail section or abdomen section. I also, uh, I do a lot of wraps, but I also super glue it in, so. Now I've got a piece of 3X fluorocarbon tippet. And I'm crimping it in two spots. Two little flat sections at the very end and then about mm, three eighths of an inch behind it. I'm gonna match those two flat spots up together and that space in between is gonna become my loop. See, I lash that thread in a little bit further back, right above the, the bar of the hook. So he takes it and pulls over the tip it. Lash it down attach or string through my abdomen section that I just tied. Couple loops. And then pull on my abdomen section so that I can match up those two flat sections. Right there. See, so still got that loop. And take that mono, bring it under, and then over the hook, and then back over the top again. Lash it down. and trim off my excess tippet. Now I'm gonna put a little, I'm trimming off that, ex, that 17 pound mono, and I'm gonna put a dot of super glue on there. 
And what I do is I put a drop on there. This is one of those little spout dispensers that I got from one of the hobby stores, model building stores. I put a drop on there and then I wipe it off and whatever excess is all that I needed. Now this is a piece of, oh, about an eighth of an inch wide medallion sheeting. And I believe this is uh, olive brown, mottled olive brown. And it's going to be my wing case. Now I'm also going to make a little bit of a dubbing loop here. I could just twist it onto the thread, but I get a little fancy. I like, I just like the look of it when it's trapped in a loop, the dubbing. lost that loop so I'm going to go back in, split it again and stick in some more dubbing. Then spin my thread to create that brush. And then wrap it forward. Now I'm going to take a, a feather from a hand, hand saddle, clear off the fuzz, push back portions of the feather and so I have a little tip and tie it in at the tip. Take a pair of hackle pliers. Or fingers. <laughs> and just wrap it. And brush some of the fibers backwards. Capture that stem. Pull those hairs all back. And trim that stem off first. What it's trying to do is get a little more breath in my flies. I do use rubber legs and I do use CDC, but it collapses. And if I use a hen feather, it gives me more breath. So I've taken my medallion sheeting and I've pulled it over and it's going to be my wing case. Need to lash it down, trim it, and tie it off. Now I don't make as many whip finish ties because I know that I am going to put some medallion sheeting on, uh, excuse me, some UV resin on there. I trim a little bit under the bottom of the fly just so I get more better clearance on the, on the hook.
I like to take that UV resin and pull it from the bead all the way to the back so it stays down. That's the one thing with UV resin. It doesn't stick very well to medallion sheeting. So either the thread wraps or the brass bead or tungsten bead, got to get a little on there so it's all connected up. Take a good look at my still water nymph. 